Today we're making a simple ledge grabbing system like this, which allows you to grab a ledge when you jump, jump off that ledge, and select individual pieces of your level geometry to allow or disallow you to grab onto it. The finished project with the functioning ledge grab is down below in the description for download on my Patreon if you want to look through it or need a little extra help to figure things out. But let's get into the tutorial because just following along should be plenty enough. I'm going to open up my third person character and we're going to build on top of that. So let's add a event tick because we're going to check for something every frame. And I'll explain real quick what the system is going to be that we're going to build. Because every frame, what we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not the character is falling. That way we won't grab onto anything while we're rising up, because obviously we don't want that. And then we're going to cast a line down in front of the character. If that hits an object that's on a specific collision layer, it's also going to then shoot out a line in the horizontal direction. Then the hit point of that second line, we're going to teleport our character to with an offset and we're going to disable things like the gravity for the character and the actual input movement we're going to disable as well. We can drag out a reference to our character movement here and here we're actually going to get the velocity. Then we'll break that structure pin so we have the separate velocity x, y, and z. Because we don't really care about the x and y velocity, we just want to know about the z velocity. And we want to know whether or not the z velocity is less than zero. Because if it's exactly equal to zero, we're not falling. And if it's higher than zero, we're actually moving upwards. You might think that using the is falling from the character movement would be a good alternative. I'm going to warn you not to do that because is falling actually returns true when you're jumping as well. It's just a bool that tracks whether or not you are grounded. So really it should be called is grounded, but that's a bit of a misnomer on Unreal's part. Anyway, we put this into a branch because we only want to do what we're going to do here. So if this is true, we do a single line trace by channel. Here we need to put in a start position, a end position, the trace channel, and everything else we can ignore. For the time being, I'm going to just put on the debug frames as well, so that we can debug things. And let's start from the top otherwise. The start location will be the get actor location. But we need to add something to that because the get actor location will get us the location of the actor itself. And that is somewhere around here-ish. So what we want to do is we don't want to cast from our character location downwards. What we want to do is we want to go a little bit in front of our character and then cast that line downwards. Luckily, that's pretty easy to actually do because we have a get forward vector for the actor here. And this simply just returns a vector that we can use in world space, which direction our character is facing. So if we get the actor location and we add to that the forward vector, we now are one unit in front of our character. But one unit isn't that much. As we go into the viewport here, if I move the mesh one unit forward you can barely see that this thing has moved so in order to move any significant amount you're going to want to go about 100 units in front that is a bit much maybe so let's try to watch for 50 units in front the way we do that is we get our forward vector and we simply multiply that by 50. so the way we do that is we right click on the bottom pin here and we convert that pin to a float and then we can just put in a single number. So we have forward vector, multiply by 50, add to that the actor location, and that is going to be the start of our line trace by channel. The end is going to be this, minus a certain value in the z direction. So we can simply just drag off this and subtract something like 50 in the z direction. And if we compile that, now when we are falling down, this will be a line trace starting from just in front of our character to just in front and under our character. And we can check what that actually looks like. The red line is the line trace and that is 
pretty good. That's roughly what you would want to see. It's starting at about the center of your character to about the feet of your character. The return value here is whether or not something has been hit. And now we also have a out hit, which we can split up, which has a bunch of information that we're not going to use for the most part. But a couple of these things we are going to use. But this is a little bit messy, so we're going to recombine the structure pin here. And we're going to have this return value go into a new branch node. Because we only really need to do the next line trace if the first one is successful. So we can copy over this node because we're going to be doing another line trace by channel, only if this result is true. And for here, the start location is going to be a little bit more complicated. So let's start with the end location. The end location, we can get out of this out hits result. If we just break hit result, we get a separate node with all of the hits information. What we want is the hit location. We can drag off that and subtract, and let's subtract like 10 from that or something. The reason we do that is if we have the downwards line trace, we hit this surface, and we're going to trace to that point where we hit. But there is a slim chance, it's not very likely, uh, that we miss the surface of this wall when we do so. If we take that original hit point and then just go ever so slightly lower, only 10 units, which is one tenth of this square, so it's not a lot at all, then we will always be sure that we can actually hit this wall with our second line trace. And that will be our end point. Our starting point is a little bit more complex. Not by a lot, though. Because we start off by getting our actual location again. We're going to split this structure pin into its X, Y, and Z components. Then we'll make a make vector node, which takes in an X, a Y, and a Z. I will put in a little redirecting node here. Uh, you can do that by just double clicking one of the lines. And I'll pull off this and I'll get a break vector which does the exact opposite. It takes a vector in and it makes an X, a Y, and a Z. The reason we want to do that is because we want to use the X and Y location from the actor position and the Z location from our hit impact. Because as we know, the actor location is in the middle of our body here. And if we are falling down and our character is here, we get a hit impact here. We will be casting down diagonally, which will oftentimes lead to us just hitting the top surface of whatever we're trying to grab onto again. So what we want to do is we want to cast from the same height so that we always have a straight direction into this wall. It's just very important that whatever we do, our system is made in such a way that the first line cast hits this surface on top and then our second line cast hits the wall here on the side. So that will be our starting point position. And here again, we put in a branch, which you can do by holding down the B key on your keyboard and just clicking. And if that is true, we again break hit results. And now we set actor location and rotation. We want to set both. For now, the location is just going to be our impact location. And our rotation will be based on the impact normal. What is the impact normal? The impact normal is the angle of the surface that we have hit. So in this case, this surface has a normal going into that direction. So if we put our rotation to be equal to this normal, our character will then face into that direction. We want it the other way around, of course. We want our character facing the wall. So what we can do is we can get the impact normal and just simply multiply that, convert the pin to a float by negative one. This way it will invert to normal and it will just start looking towards the wall no matter what. And we can put that into the rotation. Now this location is going to need an offset because uh, I can show you right now there's still a couple of issues with the system as we have it. It more or less works but there is uh, there's definitely some issues here with things clipping and being weird. So what we'll do is we add a offset here. And that offset is going to, at first at least, just be the impact normal. And we make this into a float again, multiplied by, let's say, about 50 as well. 
So when we add that to our location, we should now be teleported to a position that doesn't glitch us out quite as much. And as you can see, that works. But we don't really hang at all. And that is because gravity is still enabled. So after all that, we get our character movement components again. And we just set our gravity scale to being zero. Now, we also at some point are going to want to set our gravity scale back to being something else than zero. So we want to make a separate variable here. And we'll just call that temp gravity. This is just going to be a float value that will temporarily hold our gravity scale. So we're going to drag that in holding alt to get a setting node. And we'll get our gravity scale before we set it to zero and store it in this separate variable. That way we can set our gravity back to what it's supposed to be. And one last thing is we want to stop movement immediately. This just makes it so that your character movement uh, gets stopped right that second and doesn't keep falling down with the velocity it already had. So now you can see we're hanging in the air. Of course, there's a couple of glaring issues we need to animate and we can still float around and when we stop touching the controls and everything is weird right now okay <laughs> so there's quite a bit to do first and foremost i'm going to make a new variable and that's going to just be a can move variable we're going to set that to being a bool variable and at the very end of this we'll set that to being false let's compile and set the default value to being true then over here in our movement input we move this a little to the left and we put in a branch node before with our can move as the condition so if we can move then it's fine to execute all this code if can move is set to false we don't want to be able to move around and now the most important thing that we still need to do is going into our skeletal mesh and finding our animation class which is our animation blueprint and update our state machine a little bit because from the falling state that we have made in a previous video as long as we're falling down we sometimes want to be able to go into a hanging animation that i have provided here as well so let's make that transition and then from hanging we want to be able to do our hanging jump which is a specific different animation from our usual jumping animation so let's drag that in as well and call that hang jump make that transition as well and then make a transition back to our default state going into our event graph here we do have some setup already for our normal locomotion we're just going to build all of that so out of this cast to bp third person character we want to get can move we probably should call this uh, something else like hanging instead because that's a little bit more descriptive of what we're doing here but it'll be fine we'll also make a new variable in our animation blueprint here uh, and we'll call this one hanging and we'll just set that equal to the can move in our character blueprint now simply when we are falling if our hanging is true actually now that i think about it this hanging is not a good name for this variable at all let's go back to calling it can move because i got things mixed up uh this needs to be a can move going through a not boolean so when we can't move so when we are hanging we want to do this transition and then here we already have a system set up for a jumping animation so we can literally use the same variable jumping putting that into there and then in our transition back to our normal idle slash walking we can just do that based on the automatic rule based on sequence player in state which just transitions this to our normal animations again when this animation finishes playing so now when we normally jump we jump normally but when we grab onto a ledge we can see we grab on with a not proper offset but you want to fine tune this of course and then when we try to jump you can see we play the other animation but we don't actually do any jumping which is kind of weird isn't it and here we need to put in a little bit of extra code uh, in our jumping event so we're going to put in a branch here and get the can move variable 
If we can move, that means we're not hanging. We're just going to do the normal jumping. But if we can't move, we first need to set our gravity scale on our character movement component. So let's get a reference to that. Set gravity scale to our temporary gravity scale. That way our gravity sets back to what it's supposed to be and then we can jump. And we also want to set our can move then back to being true, of course, because we are now no longer hanging. Sometimes this can be a little bit iffy with the jump and being weird. So what you can do if you run into any issues is we can just set the velocity for our character movement components to be something like X and Y zero and then like 500 or something for the Z value. If we put that in between there. Alternatively, what you can also uh, use is the Z jump velocity. Just get that and split the structure pin and put that into the Z velocity. And now you'll be able to see that we can hang off ledges and jump off them. And now we just need to fine tune the offset here, which is all the way back here. 50 is clearly too much. So let's go for something like 30. Let's see if that's any better. And then we're going to subtract from that vector. And we're just going to subtract something like uh, 20 in the Z direction so that we end up slightly lower than where we end up now. You also want to watch out for the fact that we still do have this character's collision, right? So if we are a little too far into the wall, we'll get pushed out through the collision. So if you're like, I'm trying to set the offset, but it's not working, it's probably because of that. And this is pretty good for the time being. You can see there's a little air gap in between still, but you have to get really close to really notice that. And in normal gameplay, you would never really like run into that being an issue. The last issue though still is, is anything that we want to grab onto at the moment, we can grab onto, including like the walls of the levels and this as well. It's just like, that's not great, is it? So we want to make a custom trace channel. For that, we need to go into our project settings and look for trace channels. We can make a new trace channel and we'll call something like a uh, ledge grab. The default response should be set to ignore. We don't want to grab onto anything unless we specifically say that yes, this collision should be grabbable. And now if we go into this block over here and we go into its collision settings on the static mesh component, we can set our collision preset to being custom. And if we now look at that, we have a ledge grab collision channel. And if we set that simply to being block instead of being ignore, now the line tracer will work on this, but not on this or on this or on this or on any of these other objects. And you might have to restart your project or compile some things before uh, the trace channel shows up here. But now in our line trace by channel, we can set our trace channel to being a ledge grab for both of these. And we can set our debug to not render at all anymore. And now if we try to go up to this wall, we won't be able to grab onto it anymore. If we go up to this block over here, we're not able to grab onto it. But that one block that we set grabbable, we can grab onto still as you can clearly see here so that's a ledge grabbing system in unreal engine there's a lot of components to it but it's also a very good thing to learn a good few couple of things there's a little bit of logic in there there's line tracers in there there's some animation blueprint stuff in there so i hope this has been a, a formative video if you want to get the project file to mess about with on your own or check around in my work i'm going to clean up the nodes a little bit so that are a little bit more readable and then post it on my patreon link down below in the description and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page